My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball. Hello, everybody. It's a gay family series starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning. Transcribed and brought to you by the Jell-O family of Red Letter Desserts. with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper, two people who live together and like it. As we look in on the Coopers this evening, George is sitting in the living room reading the paper when Liz makes a dramatic announcement. Okay, George, this is it. Huh? What? Now, don't try to get out of it. I know when I tell you, you'll say, oh, no. What are you talking about? This is the night we have to pick out our Christmas card. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I called it. Oh, but Liz, we just picked out the Christmas cards the other day. That was last year. Oh. Well, do we have to do it tonight? Yes, and you don't even have to get out of your chair. I don't? No. Luckily, one of the women in the neighborhood is selling Christmas cards to make extra money. And I have her sample book right here. Well, this is something like it. Now, who was smart enough to think of doing that? If she was a snake, I'd bite you. <laughs> Liz, you selling Christmas cards? Good morning, sir. I represent the Kris Kringle Christmas Card Company. I have a lovely selection of cards, 25 for a dollar with your name printed free. Honey, I'm proud of you. Give me a kiss. Give me an order. <laughs> oh, strictly business, huh? Right. How many orders have you sold? Oh, quite a few. How many? It's going along fine. <laughs> How many? Yours and two more will make three. <laughs> I see. Well, I just started, George. Now, take a look at these cards. Every one of them distinctive and completely unusual. Here, look at number 14. The verse inside very clever. Oh. Uh -huh. Just listen to this. This is the season of holly and spruce, so Merry Christmas to you, Uncle Bruce. <laughs> Uncle Bruce. That seems to have a very limited appeal. Holly and spruce. Uncle Bruce. Not at all. Oh, let's be sensible. What if his name isn't Uncle Bruce? Very simple. By card number 14A. Here it is. This is the season of spruce and holly, so Merry Christmas to you, Uncle Charlie. <laughs> I was afraid of that. Well, my only uncle's name is Gil Hooley. That's number 14G. <laughs> what? This is the season that we know as Yuli, so Merry Christmas. All right, I did. But you aren't giving these cards a fair chance. Look, now, here's a nice one. Yeah, not bad. Okay, we'll take that. Oh, I'm glad you like it, George. It's the only nice one in the book. I'll write up the order. <clears throat> How many do you want of those, sir? Oh, a uh, hundred, I guess. One hundred of number twenty. That'll be four dollars, please. <laughs> four dollars is the regular retail price. I know. Well, don't you get a discount when you buy them yourself? I'm not buying them. You are. <laughs> but I was under the impression that the name on the cards would be George and Liz. Well, whatever you want on the card, sir, the printing is free. Oh, Liz. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. You're making a commission on yourself. You're taking the money out of one pocket and putting it in the other. Well, as long as the first pocket is yours and the second pocket is mine, who cares? <laughs> You insist on my paying the full price? Yes, sir. All right. Here's your four dollars. Thank you. That was easier than I expected. <laughs> now about the printing on my cards. Yes, sir. Uh, how would you like that to read? Liz and George Cooper? Uh, no. George and Liz Cooper? No. Well, how do you want it to read? George Cooper and Friend. <laughs> What will people think? I don't know. 
Uh, how soon may I expect those, miss? George! <laughs> what? I don't want to be your friend. I want to be your wife. <laughs> I can't hear you. Well, I'll tell you what. Since you're such a close relative, I'll forget my commission. Ah, <laughs> good. <laughs> Darn you. <laughs> I still haven't made any money. Who else can I sell some cards to? Mrs. Cooper. Oh, I hear my pigeon cooing at me. <laughs> In here, pig uh, Katie. Could I see Mrs. Yes, yes, of course. Come in. Sit down, Katie. Make yourself at home. Well, I... I wanted to see you, too. Well, you see, I, I represent, represent the Kris Kringle Christmas Card Company. company. <laughs> Is there an echo in here? <laughs> oh, Mrs. Cooper, you, too. I'm afraid so, Katie. How's this with you? Oh, I've sold every customer I've talked to. Really? The only customer I sold is myself. Which did you pick, Katie? Number 20. Hmm. That's the one we picked. Why don't we buy just one set of cards and sign a George, Liz, and Katie? That'll do, George. <laughs> okay. Man, I'll be getting along. I have a list of prospects. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Katie. Good luck. Hmm, I wonder if any of my prospects are on her list. Oh, my goodness, where's that phone? What's the matter? Iris Atterbury. Katie's headed for there right now. Ooh, I'm glad I thought of it in time. Iris should be good for at least a... Hello, Iris? Well, Merry Christmas to you. Iris, what I called about. Oh, you were getting ready to call me? <laughs> no, I just bought my card. <laughs> I've heard of the Chris Kringle Christmas in Dubai. Oh, number 20. <laughs> what did I want? Well, I just called up to say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Goodbye. <laughs> did she take number 20? Yes. If this keeps up, everybody in town can buy one card and keep it. Well, let's, let's pick another card. Oh, it's no use, George. That was the only good one in the book. The way I feel right now, I don't think I'll even send an artist here. No, you don't mean that. I do, too. It's just not worth it. Look what happened last year. Oh, don't remind me. Knocked ourselves out getting the cleverest, cutest card in town. Sent out three boxes of them. And not a single soul so much as said, we got your card. Well, the important thing is that we sent them. Who's that? No, probably someone from the Kris Kringle Christmas Card Company. I'll get it. Special delivery. Uh, thank you. It's a special delivery letter, Liz. For me? It's from my mother. For me. <laughs> it's for both of us. Oh, sure. I don't know what you have against mother. There. Look at the first line of that letter and you'll see. My dear, darling, adorable, wonderful George and Liz. <laughs> now, Liz. Well, that's nice. Read it for yourself, George. My dear, darling, adorable, wonderful George and Liz. Well, you sure changed her tune in a hurry. <laughs> I can't be with you this Christmas, but I'd like to have a picture with me. A picture of your smiling face. Uh, your two smiling faces. Yes, your two and mine. <laughs> Look, you're not fooling me, George. What else does she say? Uh, <laughs> love, mother. Uh, nothing else, Liz. Let me see that letter. Oh, no, no, there's nothing. Let well, if it will keep peace in your family, you may tell Liz I asked for a picture of you both together. But, baby, try to stand a little away from her so I can cut your picture out clean. Now, Liz. This is no news to me, George. I've seen the only picture she has of us. The one of you with my arm around you. Just my arm. She cut the rest of me out. <laughs> Well, honey, she's getting old. Now, now, let's just forget about my mother. We still haven't settled the matter of our Christmas cards. Uh, uh, let's see the rest of the cards in that book. No, the rest of them are just awful. I could make better cards than... Hey, hey, that's an idea. I'll make our Christmas cards myself. Oh, not artistic. You better buy them. Either I make them myself or you buy them. Oh, all right. Make them, but you'll be sorry. Okay, George Cooper. Just wait till you see the beautiful cards I make. You'll see how artistic I am. Well, folks, for a picture that's always a triumphant success, you just can't beat a beautiful shimmering mold of jello. 
So pretty to look at and so easy to make, the swell new quick setting. It's a busy day lifesaver. Gives you beautiful finished jello in just about one. Dissolve your jello in one cup of hot water. Then add one cup of ice cubes or crushed ice, filling the cup to the brim with water. Stir until the ice melts completely and pop into the refrigerator to chill. And about one hour later, your jello is all ready to set on the table. All six delicious Jell-O flavors go with the holidays like Santa's sleigh. So sparkling gay in those bright, shimmering colors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. And also fruit-rich good to eat. They make a party of any meal. Look for those big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. And it's Jell-O for red letter desserts. J-E-L-L-O. And now back to Lucille Ball in My Favorite Husband. As we look in on the Coopers once again, it is two days later. Two days that Liz has spent diligently carving a linoleum block to hand print their Christmas cards. Okay, stand by, Katie. You are about to witness the first printing of an original Liz Cooper Christmas card. I'll bet it's adorable. Now I spread the ink on, push it onto the paper like this. There. Ah. Well, what do you think of it? Uh, Well, it's nice, but um, what does it say? (laughs) Merry Christmas. In what language? (laughs) Doesn't look like that to me. That's what I carved. And did you make the letters backwards? Of course not. Don't be ridiculous. Uh, Mrs. Cooper, when you're making a block to print with, you have to make the letters backwards if you want them to come out forwards. Ooh. <laughs> if you make them frontwards, they'll print backwards. Now she tells me. <laughs> the design is nice. Maybe you can send them anyway. No, I'm afraid our friends wouldn't understand it was Merry Christmas if it says Sam Tritch e <laughs> No, I guess not. And they wouldn't even know who it was from. Look at our name, Zill and Agrog. <laughs> oh, Zill and Agrog Repook. <laughs> I'm right back where I started from. Yes, ma'am. I'll get it, Katie. Yes? Oh, good afternoon, madam. If I told you I could solve all your Christmas card problems, what would you say? I love you. <laughs> you do? No, I meant you came along at the right moment. I'm desperate. You must be if you love me. <laughs> and look, shall we stick to Christmas cards? Now, what are you selling? And this year, the smart set is sending personalized cards. Why don't you send your friend you? Me? Yes, you. Well, I'll tell you, I tried it, but I don't fit through that slot in the mailbox. (laughs) (laughs) I I was referring to a likeness of yourself, a Christmas card with a picture of you on it. Oh. The Pagalowski Studio of Photographic Art has a holiday offer. 100 cards with your picture, complete with envelopes, for the ridiculously low price of $5. Oh, what a wonderful idea. Our picture on a Christmas card. I'll take it. I haven't finished yet. (laughs) Oh, sorry. Go ahead. And 47 cents. Well, when can we have them taken? And just come out here this afternoon, and you, you know, you'll be having your picture taken by a mask. One of the truly great photographers of our time, Professor K. Pagolovsky himself. Wonderful. Oh, I'm so relieved. My problems are all solved. I'm so happy I could kill you. You don't really mean that, do you? <laughs> uh, no, I just said it. Yes. Yeah. Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Did you hear that, Katie? Yes, ma'am. I solved all my troubles in one fell swoop. (laughs) Did you? What do you mean? This means your mother-in-law will get a picture. Oh, my goodness, you're right. I can't take those cards. Hey, I made a mistake. Oh, he's gone. Now, what are you going to do? There's only one thing to do. I've got to stick so close to George in those pictures that she can't cut me out. Now, here it is. 
Megalovsky Photographic Studio. Looks like sort of a beat-up joint. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be anyone here. Oh, there's a salesman. Hello there. Hello, 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 Mrs. Cooper. Is Professor Pegalowski ready to take our picture? Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, you are Sergei Pegalowski? Well, now if you'll step into my studio. Uh, how do you want us to pose? Well, I thought and I thought and I thought and I thought and I think I've come up with something unusual for you. Oh, good. What is it? Mr. Cooper, I thought you could be sitting in the chair holding a derby hat over your chest and Mrs. Cooper could be standing in back of you with her hand on your shoulder. <laughs> oh, that would be nice. But don't you think I should wear a handlebar mustache? Uh -huh. And where are the head clamps? Right behind you. Oh, I didn't see them. Look, if you two comics don't mind, how about a nice informal pose? All right, I'll sit on your lap. On my lap? Well, that's informal. I want to be close to you, George. So close that even a, a scissors won't fit between us. <sighs> now, don't be silly. Well, you get posed and I'll focus the camera. Ooh, what's the matter? I'd forgotten how dark it was under here. <laughs> Oh, you look fine. And Mr. Cooper... Uh, where are you, Mr. Cooper? <laughs> I know you're there. I can see your shoes. Oh. Liz, for heaven's sake, you're right in front of me. Now, don't hog the picture. Now, sit here by my side. Okay. Not so close. There's plenty of room. We'll both be in the picture. Yeah, but not for long. <laughs> now, you sit right there. Heads together. Heads apart. Heads together. Heads apart. All right. There. All right, go ahead, Professor. Take the picture. All right. One, two... Mr. Cooper. Yes? Do you want with a hand growing out of the top of your head? <laughs> oh, Liz, cut that out. Heads together? All right, heads together. Now, hold that. Oh, what happened? <laughs> you use too much flashlight powder. <laughs> Okay, I, I stopped by the photographers on the way home and got the proof. Oh, good. Give me a kiss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, that's a great way to lose a lip. Hey, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Now, take it easy. Don't worry. They're all pretty good. Oh, you pee. I just got them in the shop. Well, you might at least have waited until we looked at them together. Well, which one do you like? Uh, well, I think this one is the best, George. There's a nice highlight on my hair. Yeah, but, uh... But what? Well, it makes me look like I need a shave. Oh, I hadn't noticed you. <laughs> well, which one do you like? Well, well, I rather like this. Uh, I think that's the big one. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's wonderful of you, George. Wonderful. Well, then we'll tell him but, to go ahead. But, uh... But what? That's my bad side. <laughs> well, what about this next one? It's a different pose. Oh, no, that really is a side. Well, you better settle on something, Liz. You're running out of sides. <laughs> well, how about this one? Oh, no, no, I don't like no, it. No, I don't either. Too bad. It's the first one we've agreed on. <laughs> Look, Liz, you're a woman, and it matters more to you than to me. We'll pick one that flatters you. Oh, well, thanks, dear, but most of them will go to your business acquaintances. It's more important that you look your best. No, no, I insist. It's the best one of you. Oh, I insist. Now, the best one of you. 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 Well, all right. Oh, <laughs> darn it, I went one you too many. <laughs> you big ham. All right, Liz. Just so nobody will be unhappy, we'll pick this one. Well, the one where we both look lousy? Doesn't even look like us. Don't worry, dear. Our names will be on it. Okay, maybe people be nice like they were last year and not say anything about it. <laughs> oh, Professor Begalowski. Oh, Mrs. Cooper, I was just going to start on your card. Oh, I'm glad I caught you. Uh, I got to thinking that the picture we decided on wasn't really flattering enough of George, so I want to change it and surprise him. 
Well, all right. Here are the proofs. Which one is it you want now? Um, this one. This is the one that makes George look good. It is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this makes him look like he needs to shave. Oh, I know that that's when George looks his best, in the morning before he shaves. Well, all right. If that's what you want. Oh, one thing, if I may say so. You look gorgeous in this one. Really? I hadn't noticed. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll start in them right away. Well, thanks a lot. Goodbye. Oh, Professor Pagalowski. Oh, Mr. Cooper, I'm just going to start on your card. Oh, I'm glad I caught you. You know, I got to thinking that the picture we decided on wasn't flattering enough of Liz. Oh? Well, it will be when you see it on the card. No, no, I want a chance and surprise her. Well, all right. Here are the proofs. Uh, we want a, uh, well, uh, this one. Oh, Liz looks great in this one. She does? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of her bad sides. Oh, I know, but Liz's bad side is so much prettier than anyone else's good side. Well, all right. And if I may say so, this one is certainly handsome of you. You think so? Oh, gee, I hadn't noticed. Yeah. Now, now, you sure this is the one you want? Oh, yes, yes, this is it, all right. Well, it better be, because I'm starting on them right now. George, George, our Christmas cards are here. Hey, I can hardly wait to see what they look like. Oh, here, George, you open them. Oh, no, no, wait. Hey, what's the matter? George, before you open the card, there's something we should discuss. Well, what do you mean? Well... You know what a vague little person Professor is. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if he makes a lot of mistakes. Well, what about? Well, if, for instance, he should have made a mistake and printed the wrong picture on our cards. Now, understand, I'm pretty sure he didn't. But if he did, now, there isn't any reason for either one of us to get upset, is there? Well, certainly not. If there is a mistake, we'll take it good-naturedly and all have a good laugh over it, won't we? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, open the cards. Well, there they are. But that's the one that's good of you. I mean, that isn't the one we picked out. You were right, Liz. He made a mistake. I'll say he did. Well, I guess we'll just have to send him anyway. Like heck we will. Well, now, wait a minute. We weren't going to get upset, remember? Upset? Who's that? Just because that little made a mistake is no reason we have to send the money card. Remember, we were going to be good-natured about it. I am good-natured. We're going to laugh about it. I'm like it. Uh, aren't you being a little childish? No. After all, it's only a Christmas card. I don't care what it is. We're not going to send them. I'll show you what we're going to do with them. There. Liz, you threw them in the fire. You bet I did. Well, you know what you can do now. You can march right down to the store and buy some more cards. Tomorrow. Tonight. Well, George, it's snowing outside. That's tough luck. I'll get your coat and galoshes out of the closet. If you love me, you wouldn't treat me this way, turning me out on a night like this. <laughs> oh, uh, Liz. Give me my I'll go. Well, um... Liz, honey, you don't have to. Why? What do you mean? Well, I, I have three boxes of regular Christmas cards right there in the closet, all stamped and addressed. You have? Uh, real cute ones with a reindeer and little ribbons on its horns. That sounds like the ones we had last year. Yeah. <laughs> no, no wonder nobody acknowledged them. I just found out I forgot to mail them. Oh! What happens this evening? Tonight, Robert, we go to Egypt. I am a famous lady archaeologist, and you're interviewing me for the Scientific Gazette. A little old bones music, Wilbur. Hello. Hello there. <laughs> Are you the famous archaeologist, Professor Dorothea Theodora? Well, all right. We won't get very far if I ain't. <laughs> I see. Well, I'm from the Scientific Gazette, and I'd like to interrogate you. Oh! <laughs> well, I think you're pretty cute, too. <laughs> Look, 
You don't understand. I'd like to ask you a question. Oh, well, shoot the query, dearie. <laughs> I understand that you are the ultimate authority in the interpretation of primitive inscriptions unearthed since the Neolithic, Paleolithic, and Pleistocene ages. Well, we all have days like that. <laughs> you are the only living person who can read hieroglyphics. I am? Oh, I am, I am, yes. Would you read those hieroglyphics there for me? Oh, gladly. A square, curly Q, arrow, man, zigzag, zag zig, moon, tree, doodle. What does that mean? I don't know. I think it means jello comes in six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and doodle. That's lime. Oh, you can read Egyptian, too. I can read Egyptian as well as you can. I suppose the next line says, the flavor is locked in by a special process and can't get out till your first detectable... A delectable spoonful. Oh, you can't even read English. <laughs> Jello. Now you better let me finish it for you. A Jello makes you think of the real ripe fruit itself. So look for the big red letters on the pyramid. Oh, and look, there's a signature. Hmm. Three drums. Yes. You know who that is, don't you? No. No. Three drums. Why, that's that. Famous Egyptian philosopher, the thing. The you have been listening to my favorite husband, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning, and based on characters created by Isabel or Knight Transcript Script with Madame Hugh Original music was composed by Marlon Skiles and did by Wilbur Hatch. The part of Katie, the maid, was played by Ruth Parrott. Henry, what are you thinking about? Why, that new instant sanker coffee, dear. It certainly is wonderful. Sure thing. Just look at the new richer coffee color. Taste the new full body flavor. Discover how much less instant sanka costs. And did you know the makers of instant sanka make the only caffeine free coffee? The kind that can't affect anybody's nerves or sleep. Try the new Instant Sanka. It's wonderful. Be sure to listen to Lucille Ball in My Favorite Husband again next week, presented by... Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O pudding. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tap. The yolk of pudding. Yes, sir. The name Jell-O is a registered trademark of General Foods. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, where you hear Lucille Ball and my favorite husband every Saturday night on the Columbia Auction.